Good morning, users of YouTube. And, um, well, my voice might sound a little bit different to you guys because, well, I just woke up and I wanted to get this video started so I can carry on with my life. Well, anyway, this is the video that you guys probably have been waiting for for a while, and I'm finally gotten up to do it. This is my overview of the finished PC, well, semi finished PC build. Um,. I'm just gonna go quickly, kind of do an, like an opening. I'll show you guys the internals, what everything does. Basically, it's like my before the build thing video, except everything's put together. Well, I don't know. I'm just a little tired, so I'm gonna have some issues talking and whatever. Ubiquitous tired people usually do or whatever. Alrighty, so moving on to the back. I should be starting with the front, but what the heck, it's me. So on the back we have, you know, I'm just going to start from the front. So on the back, on the front, we have the um, tray loading disk drive. It's my Asus OEM disk drive. These are the kind of disk drives you'd find in typical desktop computers. There's nothing special about them. I was going to go with Blu-ray, but I just decided since I don't really use Blu-ray and I don't know any other family members who do, uh, what the heck, I'd just go with this because we don't even have any Blu-ray discs anyway. We also have slits on the sides to allow air to come in. There's an intake behind this that's in the case. so yeah. And there's the AMD Athlon 2 logo. I stuck that onto the front of the case because that's what my processor came in came with. Nothing else to see on the front. Oh, you probably guys are noticing that the three and a half inch bay does not have a card reader in it. And yes, you're not crazy. Yeah, that's the case because it was broken. Yes, the card reader for some whatever reason stopped working right and it actually never really worked because when I turn the computer on, the power LED on the uh, card reader wouldn't even turn on. The access light would instead. And when you would put a card in it, the access light would flash and then the card would be red And as the access light blink. So something was really wrong with the board, uh, the whole card reader. So I just popped it open and it was very uh, sad how all the circuitry looked kind of homemade and the whole thing was a very cheap. So I can understand how it fails so easily. But I digress. Moving on to the top, we have the power button, a reset switch, hard drive LED, microphone and headphone ports. Yes, I also tested everything to make sure it all worked. USB 2 and USB 3. Now, there's a lot of changed things in this video or about this computer that I mentioned in the before the build video and there's a lot of changed stuff just to make it work right with this thing so yeah bear with me oh and by the way if you guys want to know what the feeling of this case is just to feel what the rubber coating kind of feels like and you just want to feel it for yourself and if you have one of these pocket juice things you'll know how it will feel because the material used to make the outer coating of this is feels kind of like feels almost like this kind of material this one is just more solid I guess I don't know but it is the same material so if you have a pocket juice thing go ahead and feel that because that's kind of what it feels like the case kind of that kind of this pocket juice thing feels like this case so if you guys want to know what the screen coating feels like either buy one of these and feel it because these are like 10 bucks at the store these are very cheap they only last about an hour and a half, but it works for me. It works for powering my Raspberry Pi up, like when the power goes out or something. Alrighty, we're almost done. So opening the top, which you just pull the switch and then pull the switch off because you need to pull it up with your finger, which is something that maybe could have been improved. Here we have yet another strange thing I kind of said about that it should have been different. So the fan right there is the dead silent fan with all of its glory. I really like these fans. They're very nice. And you might see this fan here. Well, the thing is, 
This fan came in with the computer case itself, so it was actually originally the exhaust fan. But I just decided to put it in on the top because, well, I'd have an extra 120 millimeter fan lying around. Why not put it in? But this is going to be temporarily because I'm going to get a fan hole cover that will block this whole thing completely. So that'll be later on. But that's just a temporary setup. I mean, I have a fan hole. I have a fan mounting, fan holes, why not use it until I get the bracket hole thing? Because I really don't want to have this fan in. It doesn't even spin that fast, it only spins at 900 RPM. So I had to put in a, a 7 volt step down adapter to make this spin at 110 volts. I'm sorry, 1100 volts. Sorry, uh, that. 1100 RPM, and that spins at 900 RPM. So this is what happens when I do videos in the morning. Now, I'm only doing this because I just want to get it done. I have other stuff to do. So, that is in that case. Now I'm going to push this computer away from me and we're going to open the side panel. I'm sorry, let's go through the back. <laughs> Alrighty, here we have the other exhaust fan, the other dead silent. I had to go through some issues with this one. I actually mounted it on the wrong direction and I had the air blowing into the case rather than blowing out. So that was a little pain because I had to pull these guys out and it made me hurt my finger. It like pulled the skin up underneath because these rivets are rather thick. And man, they were painful. <clears throat> oh, by the way, the fan on the top, sometimes it rattles because it's hanging from the top of the case. So what I did to fix that was I put zip ties underneath the pole mounting thing in between the fan and the uh, metal mounting brackets in there so to make it spin less qui more quietly and <clears throat> I, I don't really consider these dead silent when you hear them I, I don't know if it's because just the sound of that and that fan on the top these fans are making the noise much louder than it is but either way I like the fans and they're very nice <clears throat> they're very nice feel build quality and whatnots <clears throat> So on the back we have, my camera can focus, a U a two USB 2 port, two USB 2.0 ports, a PS2 keyboard slash mouse port that can be equipped with either of those two. I use the keyboard for this port, um, a DVI connector, this is just DV, I think that's DVI-I, I'm not really sure. Uh, VGA, HDMI, USB 3, Gigabit Ethernet, and other two USB 2 ports, line in, headphone, and microphone. Next going on here, we have the generic COM port thing, COM slash pal parallel port. Problem with this is, it's very loose in its hole, as you guys can see that. And the problem was... When I was pulling it inside, I must have ripped the ribbon cable attaching the um, DB25, I'm sorry, DB9 port. I accidentally ripped the ribbon cable going into this. One of the ribbons for the pin header fell off. So I, what I did to fix it was I pulled out the original StarTech bracket thing. I was, I, I was going to use temporary in this case before that would come. So I bought that and... And I threw it on here, and then I put the other one and put it on the other bracket, the Star Tech bracket thing. Um, an empty slot, and then we have the Intel 7260 um, AC Wi-Fi card with dual antenna and Bluetooth, and we have a FireWire card. Another thing that I did not mention at all, and I'll tell you guys why in a moment. Right here we have a little vent for the two and a half inch drives. As you can see, you can see the media drive right there sitting in its uh, fun hole, I guess. And the power supply, which is off because I pulled the case from where it was. Alrighty, so I'll tell you guys why there's a FireWire card rather than a dial-up modem. Problem was the dial-up modem did not work with the Ubuntu operating system at all. It only worked with, window with Windows. And when I could get it to work in Windows, it worked pretty well. The problem is it just didn't work at all in Ubuntu. So I just no point to keep the modem in there, especially because I actually do have a serial modem right up there. And there is a serial port right here. So unfortunately, I guess I'm just going to have to stick with 
the serial modem, unless if I can find a modem that is a dial-up based modem, I'm sorry, a modem that is compatible with Linux, then I could use that. But the FireWire card I actually had already, it was into my Floater 72 computer, and I just pulled that out to see if it would work in Ubuntu, and it does. I have a CD drive, a FireWire based CD drive, CD burner, sorry, in this thing right here. I have that, it's an Omega CDRW burner. And it works pretty well with this, so I thought maybe that might become of use someday. And then where's the people say this is pretty useless reservoir, um, I guess you call it reservoir, or water cooling um, thingies. Alright, so let's go on on the inside. I don't want to pull any of these panels off because oh, I'm too tired to, quite honestly. Now inside it might be kind of a mess, I don't know. Could be, I don't know. I don't really know what it's called. I don't think it's really that bad. Okay. So there's the inside. Yay. Okay. Let me get my flashlight so you guys can see because it's not really that bright in here. Alrighty. So here's the inside of the computer. Nice and clean. Here's the intake fan on the front. And here's the NZXT USB expansion board connected to its header all the way back here. This was actually a pain to get into here. In fact, this is actually the second one. I accidentally broke the first one because I touched it all over the place and made it discharge or charge up and whatever caused it to uh, die because of the overcharge ESD charging over. Yeah, okay, anyway. So I had to buy a new one of these. Luckily, the customer service or return for Amazon was pretty simple. I just walked down to UPS drop-off box and I dropped it in as well as that card reader I did the same thing with. And what was nice was as I was dropping that off, a new one was already coming to me because the um, lady who, there was a helpful woman who sent to me the new replacement one, right? I didn't even actually send it. She already sent me the replacement one before I could even return it. So that was very nice of her. And mine came the very same day. So that was very nice. And, um, yeah. The old one died. And the only one that worked, the only ports that did work were the USB 2 external ports. Those seemed to work, but the internal headers were dead. And they just didn't work at all. Here's the USB 3 cable, two USB 2 connectors. One of which goes to the NZXT expansion USB board, and the other one goes to the internal uh, front USB headers, front ports. And you also may guys notice a speaker, a little piezo beeper thing hanging off like that. Well, I'll tell you guys a story rather than my father's speaker. So rather than, so the reason why I did not include my dad's speaker in this project was it could not figure out how to get it to mount anywhere at all. And I was really sad that I couldn't. I know it's kind of sounds a little weird, but I'm just weird like that, so bear with me. Anyway, so I just couldn't get it to mount anywhere in the case. But and then I had remembered that I had game with this, and I told my father that I was going to use this speaker, but he was fine with it because he didn't really care. But um, so that one's there now. And yep. So here we have three. SATA connectors, one goes to, uh, the right angled one on the back goes to the DVD burner and the one in the front that is light blue goes to this one, t one terabyte uh, western digital hard drive and the black and dark blued cable goes to the Hitachi Desk Star at the bottom of it. And there's an IDE for the IDE cable for the two and a half inch laptop drive, which is buried in this computer. There is this Corsair CX 500M power supply, uh, and there's the front panel audio jacks. As you can see, I carefully hidden, hided, as you say, the whole cable in between the case and stuff. And there's the RAM module back there. And there's the cooler. Which works pretty good too. 
PWM works f f fantastically. And what's nice is the CPU d usually runs at about 30 degrees centigrade, which I punched that in my calculator, and that converts to about 87 degrees Fahrenheit, which I think is pretty freaking awesome. So this thing really does keep that CPU cool. And it's not really that powerful of a CPU anyway. So here's the um, cards. There's the FireWire card, and there's the IDE and p parallel bracket mounted back over here in the front. And then we have that empty slot that is no use as of now. And there's the Intel, Intel uh, wireless adapter with its Bluetooth thingy zip tied to that grill thing and then kind of hidden across the top into that header. There's the wire. Alrighty. Ow. Alrighty. I think that is that side. Now I'm going to show you guys the other side. I just want to show you how um, complicated wire management was in this. Especially with this kind of power supply which they don't really give you. They only give you four kinds of removable plugs. So I'm going to set my camera down for now and I'm going to go ahead and rotate the computer so you guys can see the other side. I may or may not do a power up because while well, I'm just early in the morning and I really don't feel like it. And it's a real pain to hook this thing back up once I pull it out like that. And I pull it out like I do. Alrighty, so Here's this side of the computer case, and as you can tell, wire management was a bit of a tight area to work in, but it was pretty fun building it still. So, I had to use one of the SATA connectors because, SATA power connectors, because that drive that was sitting up there was so out of place compared to everything else, so I had to kind of zip tie everything all together just to get that one SATA connector up there, which was kind of a pain. I wish that. Um, um, Corsair just, just gave me two of them to work with. It would have been a lot easier. Like, uh, two, two, um, two, uh, two SATA power connector thingies. I did have one that's using the, dr that for the drives down there, but I wish they gave me another set of those. And, um, I also have the ATX power connector that's kind of mounted all strangely to the front of the case. Thankfully, the intake is not killing it at all with its blades, but it's I think it's mounted pretty nicely. There's the CPU power plug. I like how I was able to tuck everything behind stuff. And there's the fan. There's the connector, power connector going into it, and through the cable mess there it is plugged into the computer. Which is not a PWM fan, by the way. It just stays at the constant speed. But you can turn it off, I think. You can turn the power going to it off. Um, here is the CPU cooler. The Cooler Hyper 212 Evo by Cooler Master T. Um, yeah. I zip tied the power cable for it because I didn't need so much leg room because, well, the power connector is pretty much right underneath of it. And applying the whole uh, whole bracket itself was pretty hard. And well, not hard, but it had limit had some limitations in the case, which I will show you right now. So, unfortunately, the board does kind of bend a little bit because the mounting bracket for this CPU cooler, the Intel Intel um, mounting side is kind of preventing it from mounting just cleanly down on the board, and it's causing it to bend up because of those stinking Intel brackets that are so very low to the thing. What they could have done to make this better was they could have made it a little bit shorter in height rather than so long because it's having some issues with this. But if I kept the screws not tight but a little bit like gave it the screws some leg room to work with, I think it'll be fine for future. I could just trim off the uh, Intel side since I'm not going to be using an Intel board anytime soon or an Intel processor I could just trim off the Intel sides with like a metal cutter and that would work but the problem is this computer motherboard is so heavily mounted in its case um, I would be an issue pulling it out there um, is the 8 gig RAM stick and um, 
there's the USB 3 and USB 2 cables going through their con their uh, hole down here. So right here we have a um, power cable that is zip tied together like this. It's a Molex power connector. It's also connected to the power supply. We have one connector that's going to the intake. There's one in the back that's going to that NZXT USB expansion board. But you can't see it because it's kind of very far in. And we have one power connector going into the 2.5 inch hard drive. And there should be one power connector going to a, a, tw a, tw a 7 volt step down adapter that is right here and that converts that to 7 volts thanks to a resistor in there and that just is tucked behind the case and that leads all the way to the top and we also have inside the um, fan for the uh, the mm, the original case fan that's closer to the front on the top of the case that also uses the Molex connector and I have that hooked up with the uh, 110 watt I'm sorry with the other fan that's on the top of the case so yep there is the power connector or the I'm not power connector but there's the hard drive two and a half inch drive right there as you can tell there's the converter converts it from two and a half inch to three and a half inch IDE and the drive works great actually so it's very nice it works very good with music breaks great with rhythm box the only downside is I have to click to mount it in Ubuntu every time I boot, oh, boot it up so it has to I have to mount it before when opening the rhythm box application because rhythm box won't recognize any of the songs until I click to mount the um, or double click to mount that drive like when I want to open it but that's not very concerning to me. Yes, I can always fix it with like a setting or two, but I don't really mind. So when I get the fan hole cover for the top, I am going to remove that 7-volt step-down adapter and just hook it up directly again. I'm just only doing this to be like somewhat leveled with the other fan next to it. And the reason, yeah. So instead of having X... So another thing that I'm also changing is instead of rather having um, fan filters for the exhaust fans, I decided to put a big fan filter for the intake fan. And I don't have that yet, but it's actually a good idea to do that because since all the air comes in through the front of the case and that causes dust to enter into the computer, it's best to have a, a um, it's best to have a, uh, a fan mag a fan filter for it because there is pretty much no point to have a fan filter for these exhaust fans because your computer technology inside will not be protected pretty much the only reason that I would get fan filters for it is just to protect the fans to keep them dust free but I don't really need fan filters for them so it's just best to get one big um, dust filter for the intake which is a lot cheaper actually because I'm only buying one and no other ones to buy that's it so yeah Alrighty, so that is it, and I'm only awaiting purchases for uh, the return for this guy to come back, the card reader, and the in the um, fan hole cover for the exhaust on the top, and uh, I also want to get that windowed side panel and some LED lighting in here, because it'd be kind of cool looking, especially because the fans do light up too, so that windowed side panel would be very nice, so I'm going to buy that someday, so yeah. So alright people, this is the insides of my um, PC build and um, a couple of more notes to say before ending the video. Um, I also want to say that rather with going Windows 7, I am going back with Windows XP on that operating system on that disk right there. I tried installing Windows XP 64-bit on this computer, which is capable of that, and I kept getting a blue screen of death. Then I tried Windows, X, uh, Windows 7 32-bit, and that didn't work either. Another beast blue screen of death. I didn't know what was wrong, so I threw on XP, and that seemed to have worked. And that took a couple of installations too, but it only took one installation to install Ubuntu, and that's why Linux is a lot better than Windows, because you only need to install it once, and then it's done, quite honestly. With Windows, I had to install it about four or five freaking times. It was so frustrating. So, having to have 
gone through that experience, I definitely don't want to put Windows 7 on any computer unless I really have to. And yes, I did have to because, well, Windows XP is pretty obsolete, but surprisingly enough, a lot of applications are still compatible with Windows XP, such as Steam, and the software that came on that disk is also compatible with XP. So, unfortunately, the XP version I have is 32-bit rather than the 64-bit version because, well, not because, but um, because that's the case, it actually causes issues with the whole... Um, installation because it will not recognize the full um, the full um, 8 gigs of RAM that I put it in the computer so yeah and another reason why I made this video is because since I'm going into the computer anyway I needed to fix the uh, mounting screws for the uh, wireless um, card to make it um, work well not work but make it stay in there because it keeps it's kinda loose and I need to tighten it down alrighty people thank you for watching my final build and more parts to come of course thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video I guess where I'll unbox maybe the fan filter for the intake or a fan hole cover or whatever it will be in the future but thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one and leave a comment below if you have one